Hello, friends. Welcome to Called to Homeschool, episode number 255, Kids Can't Get Along. Well, before we dive into today's episode, I want to talk about some exciting news. I have been working to create a new website for a while and it is going to be up and running in a few weeks and the doors to my membership will be opening. I will be talking more about that in a later episode, but you may want to start thinking and praying if this is a good fit for you. I have thought a lot about this and I've decided to cap how many members will be in there. I know a lot of coaches want to make millions of dollars and that is super awesome, but it is not my goal. I want to really be able to help people. And if there are too many people in there, I don't feel like I can help as much as I would like to. So when the doors open, be ready. All right, let's dive into today's episode. Are your kids having a hard time getting along? Are you sitting in your car going, yes, Meg, raising your hand, me, those are my kids. I'm always on the lookout for what some of the problems homeschool moms are facing. And one of the things that I see over and over are kids fighting. I saw a post about a mom who's putting her kids back in school because they are just fighting so much. Then a bunch of moms jumped on the post to say that is why they also put their kids back in school. Here are my thoughts about that. By separating your kids so they aren't fighting during the day will not actually solve your problem. It just makes so your kids are not with each other as often. So when they are home together, guess what? They will just continue to fight because they are never really learning how to not fight. I think having siblings home each day with each other is a wonderful gift and an opportunity for you to face the problem head on. You are never going to solve a problem by simply avoiding it. It's like having an infection and just putting a Band-Aid on it. You won't see the infection, but it's still there festering and possibly getting worse. Now, I am not trying to pretend that it is so easy to teach your kids to always get along, but it is worth it. I think you learn the best social skills from your siblings. If you can learn to get along with your brother or sister, you can get learn to get along with anyone. The University of Cambridge came out with the following study, and I'm going to read bits and pieces from the study. They say siblings and even sibling rivalry can have a positive effect on children's early development and their ability to form social relationships later in life. According to a new study, one of the most striking conclusions concerns siblings, who researchers found can often have a positive effect on a child's early development, even in cases where the relationship is less than cordial. The traditional view is that having a brother or sister leads to a lot of competition for parents' attention and may be accelerated by their interaction with... Oh, sorry, I skipped a line. (laughs) Um, Attention allowed, Dr. Hughes said. In fact, the balance of our evidence suggests that children's social understanding may be accelerated by their interaction with siblings in many cases. One of the key reasons for this seems to be that a sibling is a natural ally. They are often on the same wavelength, and they are likely to engage in the sort of pretend play that helps children to develop an awareness of mental states. Okay, that is so awesome. But I also want to share with you some things that I've found and research and all those things that what happens when siblings, what they learn, and and this is not by that they always got along, but this is things that they learn through even arguing, fighting, and not getting along with their sibling. The first thing they learn is proper social behavior. How? By trying out inappropriate behavior with their sibling, and they learn that that is not okay. I have lots of examples from my own childhood and my own kids where we have learned appropriate behavior by performing inappropriate behavior. A sibling will often let you know that you've gone too far, right? Um, If you pants a sibling and they punch you, or you take something from a sibling and they come after you, right? Like so many things you are going to learn about social behavior of what is appropriate and inappropriate just by um, trying it out on your sibling. Another thing you learn is to compromise. That may look like someone saying, or even fighting, if you play my game, then I will play yours. You had shotgun last time, so I get it this time. They learn to compromise so much, and sometimes they do it a little bit more, less eloquent, I guess you could say, than an adult does, but they are still learning those skills of compromise. 
and other things, it helps them bond. Think back on something you did with a sibling. One time, my sister and I set up a small dome tent in the house. She had me go in and then she put a lock on the tent doors um, on the little on the zipper. So she locked the zippers together. She then took out the poles and left. Was I mad at the time? Absolutely. But now it is something that I think back on and it is something that I find hilarious and something we can laugh about. I'm sure you can think of some story you did with your sibling that has created a bond, a story or something you can laugh about. Those are just some of the things that happen as children get older and some of the skills that they learn. So how does one homeschool every day when your children are fighting? I'm going to cover three different things that you can do to help with this. The first piece is if no one is getting hurt and nothing is being destroyed, learn to ignore the noise. Stay out of their arguments. Stay out of the conflict. When mom gets involved, it becomes a rivalry because they have one kid as a winner and one kid as a loser. As much as you can, let them figure things out. The second place is, the second piece, excuse me, is having a place where you actually teach appropriate behavior. Your example will be the biggest teacher, but having family meetings is so beneficial. You can do this in family meeting, you can make it part of school, but something that is just a standard in your home. So it's not just putting out fires, but it is being proactive of how we learn to have appropriate behavior. You can then start to teach your kids what to do when things aren't going how they planned. You, um, we've taught our kids to walk away if someone's being too wild or how to calm themselves down. If they don't, do want to fight, maybe they take it outside. They have a safe word, all sorts of different things of teaching them how, what to do to protect themselves, to make so things don't escalate, um, how to learn to start having appropriate behavior, how to talk to somebody when you are frustrated with them or something like that. Children don't always know how to get along. And just like you taught your kids to use the bathroom, tie their shoes, or even how to read, you also need to teach them appropriate behavior. The third piece is stopping behavior that does go too far. Now, if someone is punching, kicking, scratching, or physically hurting someone, and you can decide at your level of tolerance, because I have noticed with my boys, sometimes the slap is playful and for somebody else, it is not. So you will need to evaluate this with your own children. If when is something going too far? So if somebody is physically getting hurt, or if a child is yelling, screaming, square, swearing, or threatening someone, you most likely need to stop it. But how? First and foremost, friend, you need to stay calm. I love thinking of this, of being the first responder on a crash. Can you imagine if there was a car crash? People are injured, the cars are smashed, it's a huge mess, and a policeman comes up and is just freaking out. Oh my gosh, there's blood. Oh my goodness, there's a broken window. And it's just screaming and making everything worse. Everybody would be freaking out. But when a police officer comes and is like, okay, we've got this. Are you okay? We're going to figure this out. Everything's going to be all right. All of a sudden, you can start to calm down. When our son was in a car crash years ago, he had the nicest officer who showed up and was so calm and helped everyone calm down in the situation so we could be level-headed about things and figure out what to do best. So first and foremost, before you stop a behavior, you need to stay calm. Then you stop the behavior. Sometimes that can be as simple as saying, kid, say their name, hitting your brother is not okay in our house. We had something like this just the other day. We actually don't like the phrase that we hate someone in our home. It is a phrase that we have taught our children that we do not say in the Thomas household. Well, lo and behold, one of our children tried it out and told one of the somebody else in the family that I hate you. All it took was dad calmly looking at them and saying, those are strong words and we don't use that in our home. The behavior was stopped. Then you need to make sure you are praising when your children listen to you or they are using appropriate behavior in your home. Whatever you give attention to will grow. So if you notice that your kids will fight with each other, learn to ignore it and then praise them when they are getting along. You can say simple things like, I love what amazing kids I have. You two are so awesome at getting along. 
You two seem like you have so much fun together. I love watching you two laugh. Do these three steps on repeat. Ignore, teach, and stop things when they go too far. And guess what? Over time, your kids stop fighting so much and they learn how to actually get along. It is a beautiful thing. Try it out and let me know what happens in your home. Have a great day and I will talk to you next time.